I got on some pop playlists. I got on some indie pop playlists. I got on some chill playlists. And that's where a lot of those streams came from. How would you like to get 14,000 streams on your next song just one month after release? Well, in this video, I talked to Synthwave artist Neon Racer about how he did just that in one of his recent song releases. Hint, a big part of his strategy was getting his music onto Spotify playlists. So if you want more help getting your music onto Spotify playlists as well, then be sure to grab my free Spotify playlist placement formula guide in the description below. This will walk you through a proven strategy that a lot of artists are using to actually get their music onto playlists and so that they can trigger that Spotify algorithm and actually get Spotify promoting their music for them. Again, this free guide is in the description below. With that, let's dive into the interview. Um, yeah. Speaking of you kept me running, we could go ahead and talk about that. Sure. You, when did you release that song? Because it already has over 14,500 streams on Spotify. Yeah, so that was January. Oh my goodness, I can't remember the date. It was early January, I think maybe this. Right, so with, January, within two months. Like so within two months, you got over 14,000 streams. And yeah. right, you don't have, you didn't have a huge. I'll never see that again, I don't think. No. So. There, there's a couple components there and like i mean these answers might please some viewers <laughs> these answers might upset a few viewers i don't know how helpful it's going to be but um like we we briefly chatted about chatted about this on instagram uh probably the biggest thing was timing for me like i had annual leave from work booked for a couple of weeks so i timed that release like I, I picked that release so that it was the first day of my annual leave and my partner was working, so I was at home by myself. And what are you going to do other than promote music if you're sitting around a house? So I probably spent five to six hours a day for two weeks just wow. pushing that song hard. Um, and I did everything that you can think of. I, I watched every YouTube video on music promotion I could find. And I did some paid stuff like in terms of like Submit Hub and one of the other playlist submission I can't remember for the life of me why there's so many. Playlist I think it's push. Maybe? Playlist push, yeah, that, that was one. So, and it was it was mixed success. Uh, however, this is probably where that song did its best, and this is where it's not going to be necessarily helpful if we're looking at this through a synth wave uh, viewfinder. But its success was outside of synth wave. Um, most of the synth wave playlist curators knocked that song back for various reasons and, and we can discuss those reasons um but i got on some pop playlists i got on some indie pop playlists i got on some chill playlists and that's where a lot of those streams came from um somewhere along the way that song got picked up by that waiver playlist which i didn't oh, know okay. existed and, and i got a heap of streams off that then i sent my next song to them and they hated it <laughs> uh, but so most of that song success was outside of synthwave i have to say and i think that song like anyone that's listened to it would probably go yeah you could probably push that song into a few different genres um i don't yeah, think that's, that's another I, I think, discussion i would say that's encouraging for me um yeah sure because that i mean it shows that right i feel like synthwave like it's so great because it is very niche you have those diehard dedicated fans who are going to buy like even like tape cassettes of your music if you have them yeah. available for sale. Yeah, absolutely. But it also has broad appeal. So I feel like it's very unique because something that I teach for marketing purposes, because that's kind of my background is digital marketing, is it's best better to, to niche down with your music genre because it's easier to stand out. You're going to find those diehard fans and you don't need to be popular to make a decent living. You just need those 1000 true fans. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, if your song does have broad appeal, even better. So I feel like that's actually really encouraging that your synthwave song was also appealing to these other playlists, and so you don't have to completely limit yourself to just promoting to to synthwave playlists or outlets. You can also reach out to right. What other elements does your song maybe tap into? Is it the chill, like you mentioned, or pop? So I think that's actually really encouraging. And so it was. You said it was mostly those playlist submission tools that really helped you. Yeah, absolutely. So, and also, yeah, I made it to some good genre playlists as well. And that was through Twitter, which we haven't really discussed yet, but we certainly had that quick chat on Insta. Like I've, I've made my biggest connections within the genre on Twitter. So anyone watching this into Synthwave that's not on Twitter, get on there. Like, I think that's the most active social media platform for interaction, at least with 
genre artists and, and even fans, they're, they're all there. Um, but a lot of the playlist curators are on there. So, you know, certainly that needs to be factored into anyone promoting their songs, trying to get the, the broadest approach. And a lot of those curators are very easy to approach. They'll, they'll post that they're updating their playlist and ask for submissions and you can submit right there in the comments and okay, certainly wow. had some pretty good success um, with You Kept Me Running that way. A little bit less on How Long Last Summer, but, you know, I'll be the fair to say it's probably not as strong a song, but, yeah, they can't all be smash hits. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> not that it's, You Kept Me Running, that's Australian humour. That's anyone, why, I, I, that's, I think that's why uh, I like the embracing the uh, sometimes just putting out quantity, right? Quant quantity. Yeah. As uh, I think Napoleon Bonaparte said, it has a quality all its own. So uh, right, you're only you know, going to get better the more you put right. out, right? Like I mean, it's Africa. Practice. It's that mastery thing. The song Africa by Toto that they almost didn't put that on their album. They didn't like it, right? Yeah, and that was their most popular song. So and you never so know. The story goes with quite a few massive yep. hits around. Yeah, don't stop believing too. I think that was kind of an afterthought. Yeah, I think that promotion thing, I, th I think it's just about putting yourself out there as much as you can. And obviously, we'll have different mm -hmm. time available to right. us. I'm certainly not going to have a lot of time going right. forward on doing work-related mm -hmm. study, which is just starting to fire up again now. And so right. you kept me running was just that opportunity. I, I, yeah, grabbed so obviously, it. I, I went yeah. everywhere. I was a spam machine, you know. Right. That, and so, yeah, that's you probably learned a ton from that. And so obviously, yeah, yeah. people aren't going to be able to do that you know, six hours a day for two straight weeks. But yeah, um, there's kind of this kind of law of nature, the 80, 20 principle. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but basically, yeah, yeah. Yep. basically well, for, those who, for those who don't know, it's like basically when it comes down to, to anything, this kind of law of nature shows itself. So it's like 80% of your results are going to come from like 20% of your efforts. Right. So it, it just kind of shows itself all through life and all kinds of places. So, um, so probably you found that of all the the work you did, there was probably um, like twenty percent of your efforts produced eighty percent of your results. And Absolutely. so, what would you say that that twenty percent was? Was it the playlist tools? Was it reaching out to playlisters on Twitter? What would you say were if someone could only had a smaller amount of time, what should they focus on? For me, I think the playlist tools work the best for that particular song. Um, and, and I think with that, like my best approach was going for kind of vibe related playlists as opposed to strict genre mm -hmm. playlists as well. Like that was certainly where I got the most meat and potatoes for that song, like making it onto like chilled playlists and summer vibe playlists and all these types mm -hmm. of things that I've never even heard of and had so many followers, like who are these people? I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't put on a summer vibes playlist, but people consume music in so many different ways. And I, I think it's important for us to maybe factor those in mm -hmm. and start to use those as part of the marketing strategy. Yeah. And I, I certainly will going forward is think about it outside of genre. For sure. That's that's, something that's really overlooked. That's something I talk about in my Spotify course actually is to, before reaching out to anyone, like list as many like, key terms that that characterize your song and part of that is yeah like what moods or vibes would it fit under uh, also like seasons um like in someone's life or time of the year like summer um all that different stuff you can kind of build out these like list of keywords that all these different playlists on spotify are going to have playlists on that you might not think of because usually you just kind of think of genres but there's all these different playlists for all kinds of stuff and so really diving deep on what are all the different characteristics of your song can really help you find more opportunity. I think that's a great tip. That's an excellent tip. Yeah. And synthwave, I would say, I mean, it's summer is definitely strong with synthwave. Most synthwave songs <laughs> See, written song. Yeah. That, that yeah. word summer is used almost as much as the word neon mm -hmm. summer neon. Those are some, some yeah. different, some buzzwords there. Someone out there needs to call themselves neon summer if they haven't already. Yeah. There's probably, it. There probably is so smash there. it yeah <laughs> so uh so i guess just yeah what's your uh if you could just summarize someone who's a a brand new synthwave artist they're starting to put out music what are maybe just like one to, th to three things you say they should focus on if they want to start growing their spotify streams just put yourself out there as much as you can i think um and i, I feel like maybe it ties back to what we were talking about earlier just in terms of don't fear the feedback just put it out there 
and yeah, at some point you're going to catch a bit of momentum and a little bit more momentum is going to get you some more. So yeah, get on social media, like contact, playlist, curators. And one of the other big things is interact with other artists. Like that's been huge for me. Like share other artists' music. They see you putting back. They're more likely to share your music as well. And their followers are going to be exposed to that. You know, create a playlist on Spotify, chuck your music in there, but chuck other people's music in there, post mm-hmm. about that. It's another tool that's worked really well for me as well. You know, I kind of had my little fanboy buzz the other week when Nina shared my playlist. Oh, wow. You know, so like this stuff happens if you put yourself out there, like just get out there. Like great. if, if, if you don't take the risk, you're not going to get it. Mm-hmm. You got to risk it to get the biscuit as we say down here. So uh, what would you say stops people from doing it? Just overthinking perfectionism, just fear of the unknown. Yeah. I think it's a combination of perfectionism and none of us like uh, critical feedback. Like that's human nature. Like we, we all have, egos and you know we'll have feelings of like no one enjoys negative feedback but you just got to take it again music is subjective like just you know don't absorb that negative feedback just try and extract a lesson learned apply it to the next thing keep going you know at some point you're going to forget about that feedback some of the feedback i got through submit hub and playlist push was just like kind of hilarious really like yeah Yeah, yeah, some of that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes too long for the vocals to come in. It's like, really? Have you listened to some of the Midnight songs? My God, yeah. they got twenty-five million streams and it takes a minute and a half for the vocals to come in. Like, yeah, pe- people will just find anything to try and yeah, kind of um, whittle the numbers down. Yeah, you know, like any any reason they can find to push your song aside so they don't have to process as much. It, mm. It's not nasty uh nasty and 10 is just how we process data there's yeah. so many songs coming in they'll find any reason to push it aside so don't take it too personally just yeah, keep I putting mean, your music out there that's a good point because i heard i've heard from some people that are on there that are like that have playlists that are reviewing and like for them they want to keep their acceptance rate down because that makes them more attractive yeah. um there it, it increases their perceived value so yeah they want to keep their acceptance rate low so they might yeah, like you said, just come up with a reason to reject you. Um, Absolutely. Just, and they've got to keep those bigger artists on their playlist so that people right. are still listening to them, right? And mm-hmm. so if they're only putting on smaller artists, that's going to have that negative impact on their listeners to a certain extent right. as well. It's, so, it makes sense. Right? Yeah. So just keep going. Don't don't let any criticism get you down. Keep being consistent and just keep Boring answer, away. I know. But, <laughs> I, but think, I, I think the truth is often... Right. The boring answer, right? right? It might be the boring answer that most people know, but how many people actually implement that, right? That's the right. key. Is, and so maybe hearing it one more time will, will help some people to just, I think it's encouraging for me just hearing this to know just, hey, just keep, keep going. Keep yeah. going forward. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want even more help growing your Spotify streams, then be sure to click the video playing on the screen right now. With that, have an awesome day and keep creating.